exciting, intriguing, bizarre days of your training. And the reason is because today we start training you to project your awareness across time and space. There are many names for this. In addition to ESP, some people call this remote viewing. And Silva developed one of the most effective ways to train people to project awareness across time and space to retrieve information that you can use for good. So as I explained before in the warm-up exercises, this program is divided into two different types of immersive exercises that get you to access altered states of mind. The first are centering exercises that get you trained with going deep into alpha and theta. The second is what we call projection exercises. Projection exercises are designed to train you to become functionally psychic. And we're going to be doing five projection exercises in this program. The first is projecting to your home. The second is projecting into metals. The third is into a leaf. The fourth is into an animal or a pet. And the fifth is into the anatomy of a human being so you can learn the tools of what are sometimes called psychic healing. Today, we're going to start with the first projection exercise, projecting into a home. So I'm going to orient you to what you're going to experience as I guide you through this exercise that will take roughly 30 to 35 minutes. So as we begin this exercise, we're going to start in the usual way. It's going to be the head to toe relaxation, 333 followed by 222 followed by 111 to get you boom to your center. We're then going to read out to you a couple of laws of programming to orient you to the five laws that Jose Silva said are the laws of programming reality or programming your mind. These laws are non-negotiable guides on how you're going to use the newfound powers that are going to be unlocked in you through the Silva training. The first law is really simple. Do unto others only what you want others to do unto you. The golden rule. The second is that whatever solution you program must help to make this planet a better place to live. The third, it must benefit everybody concerned. You cannot be selfish about the solution you request. The fourth is it must help at least two or more people. So what this means is that whenever you're programming something, you want to see more than just you benefiting. For example, if you're programming to heal back pain, see how your, your child or your grandchild can benefit by you being able to play with them free of back pain. The fifth law is it must be within the possibility area. In short, you can't bend the laws of physics. Now, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to program into you at this deep state of meditation principles to keep in mind when programming. So these are really simple. And you're going to start using these principles in this projection exercise. Two things to keep in mind. The first is objective physical communication takes place in the beta left brain dimension using the objective physical senses. The hearing is used for perception. The voice is used for transmission. So we use our hearing to perceive our voice to transmit. Subjective spiritual communication takes place at your center, the alpha right brain dimension by using the spiritual senses. Visualization is used for perception and imagination is used for transmission. Remember the difference between visualization and imagination. The next thing is, in the objective physical dimension, the past is behind us. The present is our present position. The future is ahead of us. But in the subjective spiritual dimension, what Jose Silva found is that the past is to your right, the present is where you are, and the future is to your left. Now, he figured this out when he was hypnotizing people. When he would make someone regress to the past, they would move to their right. When he would make someone progress to the future, they would move to their left. So we're going to use this, this nuance of past to future in our spiritual dimension for certain forms of programming. We'll be coming to that later. And now we come to the exact projection exercise. So this is what is going to happen. First, we're going to count down three, two, one. I'm going to guide you into a complete head to toe relaxation. And then I'm going to ask you to visualize and imagine as if you're standing in front of your home. Now, you may be doing this meditation in your home. That's perfectly fine. You're going to explore your home with your spiritual senses. And you're going to start by standing outside of your home, whether it's a house or it's an apartment block. You're then going to scan your home from top to bottom, left to right, as if you're reading the pages of a book. And you're going to make that image as vivid as possible. 
you're then going to reach out with your objective hand. And it's okay for you to raise your hand during meditation. In fact, we encourage that. Don't feel like you need to sit still. Raise your objective hand. Imagine yourself turning the doorknob or waving your access card and walking into your home. Once you're in your home, you're going to enter the living room and you're going to pick a wall. Any wall that is your most significant wall. For me, it's the wall on which my TV hangs. You're going to observe this wall and again, scan the wall from left to right, observing everything on the wall. We're then going to change the color of the wall. You're going to imagine the wall red, green, blue. I will snap my fingers to help you change the color. Then we're going to do something weird, folks. I'm going to ask you to imagine as if you can walk into the wall. You're going to step into the wall and visualize what being inside the wall would look like. Imagine you were pure energy and you could go inside the wall. And when you're inside the wall, using the tools of visualization, you're going to test for four things. You're first going to test for touch. I might ask you to imagine knocking inside the wall. What sound do you hear back? You're then going to test for light, intensity, and color. If you could see inside the wall, what color is the fabric and the material of the wall? Then you're going to test for temperature. Does it feel warm? Does it feel cold? And finally, you're going to test for odor. What do you smell? Now, notice what we're doing here. We're bringing in all your psychic senses through the tools of visualization to perceive information. Now, keep in mind that I'm going to guide you through these tests through snapping. So wait for me to snap. Now, here's a very important thing. We are not all visual. Some of us, our dominant senses are not sight, but it might be sound or hearing, which is why we're bringing in all the senses. We want to train you to perceive information through all your senses. At this point, you're going to step out of the wall and you're going to imagine a chair and you're going to imagine the chair floating in front of the wall and you're going to change the color of the wall with that chair floating in front of the wall. Now, notice what we're doing here, training you to become better and better at your mental screen. We're training you to see the chair floating in front of the wall. That's perceiving things in 3D. We're training you to change the color of the wall. That's getting you trained to use color in your imagination and visualization. And now we're going to train you to go deeper with your tools of imagination. I'm gonna ask you to see a watermelon levitating in front of the wall. I'm gonna ask you to slice that watermelon and imagine what it looks like inside. You're then gonna change that watermelon to become a lemon, an orange, a banana, a carrot, a head of lettuce. And then I'm gonna program the mental video technique. Now you'll notice me say, everything you see here becomes a point of reference. What this means is that as you go through this exercise, Every little nuance from the wall changing color or being able to see a fruit in full vivid 3D becomes a point of reference for your mind on how powerful it can visualize. And every time you visualize going forward, things will become more and more colorful, real, and 3D. These are what we mean by points of reference. Now at this point, you have a choice. If you have enough time budgeted out, you can do the exercise now. Again, you'll need 30 to 35 minutes. If not, you can stop the video here, go to work or whatever else you need to do, and come back and do this exercise today before you go to bed. Let's get started with the exercise. Congratulations, you've finished the projection the home exercise. What I recommend you do is take out a journal and write down some of the insights, some of the experience. Journal your thoughts if you have time. And I will see you in the next chapter.